Well, good, well, good morning. morning, and, and welcome, welcome to Dundonald, Dundonald Parish, Parish Church. Church. We, we welcome, welcome everyone that's here, here to worship, worship this, morning, this morning, whether that's, that's in person or online. online. So, so welcome, welcome everybody. everybody. Just, Just want, want to say a special, special welcome to some of our online, online worshippers, worshippers Annette, Annette, Sue, Betty, Betty 
and Ray, Ray who, who are tuning, tuning in further, further afield. afield. I must I say, say it's really, really encouraging every week to get an email from people telling me where they're worshipping from. And sometimes it's really way away from South Ayrshire, so it's it's nice to know that there's lots of people with us. But it's, it's lovely, lovely to see, see you all back, back in person. person. It's so, so much more um, uplifting to me standing here, here when there's people in front to speak to. to. So, so if, if you can, can come back, back to worship, worship please, please do. do. So, so we're starting, starting a new sermon series. series. We started it a couple of weeks ago and we're continuing with it on First Timothy as we think about what servant leadership looks like and how we can aspire to serve and lead others in this way. But just, just a couple, couple of news and notices, notices before, before we begin, begin our time of worship. Of worship. You'll, You'll see, see that, that we're slowly, slowly returning to something like normality, normality in the church. church. While, While most, most restric restrictions, restrictions have been lifted, been lifted you're just, just asked to maintain, maintain a suitable, suitable social, social distance, distance from each other unless invited to sit, sit right beside somebody. somebody. But, but please, please continue, continue to wear your masks at all times in the sanctuary. Please spread, spread the, the word, word if you have a medical exemption. You can sit without your mask. We know there's some people in the church that will, will be able, able to, to sit without a mask that aren't coming, coming uh, because, uh, because of their medical problems. So, so just, just say to people that aren't coming that, that they could come, come without their mask if that's what is needed. needed. So, so just, just uh, a couple, couple more intimations. Uh, I've, I've spoke, spoke to you before, before that, that we're starting Alpha in September. Now, now this is a fantastic introduction to Christianity course. And it's for all people, no matter where you are on your faith journey, whether you're new to faith or whether, or whether you've been sitting, sitting in church, church all your days, the course, the course is, is for everybody. What, what we hope, hope is we're going, going to have a mixture of online alpha and in-person alpha. alpha. So if, so you, if want you want to tune in online and join the alpha group, group online, that is good. Or, or if you, you want, want to actually see people and meet people, people there'll be an option to do it that way as well. But if you can get back in touch with me and let me know if you want to do alpha, I'm just gathering the names at the moment. As, As I, mentioned I mentioned last week, week we're, we're just trying, trying to get, to get the, the car rotor, rotor back up and, up and uh, running. So that means if someone is unable, is unable to, get to get to church, church so they can, can be picked up. up. So, so if you'd like, like to join the car rotor, rotor or if you know somebody that needs to be picked up, get, get in touch, touch with, with me. me. We, we also, also hope, hope to start tea and coffee in September. So that'll be really nice to share some fellowship again after the service. I'm sure you've missed talking to each other. And, and as I've been mentioning, mentioning now, for quite, quite a few weeks, weeks we're still looking, looking for another leader to help Ruth with, with the Bible, Bible class. class. So that's, so that's with, for the, the teenagers, S1 to S6. S6. We really need another leader, leader to come forward. forward. Now, yeah, last, last week, week I have an apology. apology. I, did I did a, a whole, whole service on the importance and power of prayer. prayer. And, and I, forgot I forgot to tell you about the prayer ministry team and the prayer ministry that is here in Dundonald. So if you'd like direction on how and where to start to pray, you, you can, can be provided, provided with, with weekly prayer booklets. Prayer booklets. Now, now, they have, they have been, been written by our prayer promoter, promoter within Air Presbytery, our very own Christine, Christine Stewart. So if, so if you, you want, want some direction and support on how to pray, pray we can give you these booklets. booklets. And, if and if you're, you're personally in need of prayer, prayer or, you or you want someone to pray for a friend or a situation that you're aware of, we have a prayer team. And you, and you can, can pass, pass on your prayers, prayers to myself, myself Debbie Dunn, Dunn or Francis, Francis Naver. Naver. But, but we, we hope, hope soon to have a weekly, weekly prayer group, group that will meet in the church. The church. So, so apologies, apologies about that. that. Talking about, about prayer, prayer and not even telling, telling you about what we do ourselves. ourselves. That, was that was a bit of a, a mistake. mistake. And, and I'm just I'm going, going to, to uh, one, one other intimation is if the contact magazine will be back this week. I'm sure we're all looking for this month. I'm sure, I'm sure we're, we're all looking, looking forward, forward to reading, reading contact, contact again. again. If, if you, you have, have any articles, articles or intimations or letters, or letters could, could you get, get them into Francis before the 25th of August? August. Now, I'm now just going to invite, invite Maria, Maria to come out the front, front and she's, she's going, going to give you a wee update, update on what's, on what's happening, happening with the choir. choir. Probably, I think, the second week in September. We'll meet in the church instead of the choir room. This time, we can take advantage of the piano and the organ to practice. So that'll be 10 o'clock in the church. New members, most welcome. You do not need to read music. Just come along and join the singing. Thank you very much. Come and join our choir. It'd be great to have them back worshipping with us at the front. And, and finally, finally, we have, we have some, some birthdays. birthdays. Uh, some, some of our members of our, members of our Sunday, Sunday club have had birthdays. birthdays. So, so Lachlan, Lachlan Anderson, Anderson had his birthday on Friday, Friday and, and his sister Isla has her birthday on Monday. Monday. So, so we, we say, say a happy, happy birthday, birthday to some, some of our young, young people today. today. But, let's but let's now have a call, call to, to worship. worship. 
Jesus calls us to servant ministry. We must be willing to help others, not counting the costs or rewards. Serving God means receiving each person as though they were a beloved child. Lord, help us to truly become your disciples. Create in us hearts of compassion and kindness. Amen. Well, we're going to sing together our first hymn, a favourite here in Dundonald, The Lord's My Shepherd. Join me now as we approach God in prayer. As we gather to worship this morning, we delight in the works of our God. So we sing and shout our praises for all the things God has done for us. God is gracious and merciful and keeps his promises forever. As we approach God now, we give thanks to him with our whole hearts. God that that knows knows our our true heart's heart's desires. God, we we thank thank you that that we cannot cannot hide hide from you and that you see us as we are. So let us remember remember some some truths truths now. Father God, God, you are wise and sometimes we are foolish. Instead Instead of listening listening to you, we try to solve our own problems and make our our own paths. Jesus, you are the bread of life and generously give all that we need. But sometimes we try to provide for ourselves or forget to share your generosity with others. Spirit of God, you are faithful and we are fallible, forgetting to trust in your promises. God, gather us back to yourself. Set our feet back on your paths once more. And let let us us walk walk in your your ways and and in your truth. truth. May May our our worship worship today be pleasing pleasing to you. 
And here is now as we say the prayer that Jesus, our Saviour, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite Katie Purdy to come out the front to read from God's word to us today. And as I mentioned, we're on First Timothy again, chapter 3. This is a true saying. If a man is eager to be a church leader, he desires an excellent work. A church leader must be without fault. He must have only one wife. Be sober, self-controlled and orderly. He must welcome strangers in his home. He must be able to teach. He must not be a drunkard or a violent man, but gentle and peaceful. He must not love money. He must be able to manage his own family well and make his children obey him with all respect. For if a man does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of the church of God? He must be mature in the faith so that he will not swell up with pride and be condemned as the devil was. He should be a man who is respected by the people outside the church so that he will not be disgraced and fall into the devil's trap. Church helpers must also have a good character and be sincere. They must not drink too much wine or be greedy for money. They should hold to be to the revealed truth of the faith with a clear conscience. They should be tested first, and then, if they pass the test, they are to serve. Their wives also must be of good character and must not gossip. They must be sober and honest in everything. A church helper must have only one wife and be able to manage his children and family well. Those helpers who do their work well win for themselves a good standing and are able to speak boldly about their faith in Jesus Christ. As I write this letter to you, I hope to come and see you soon. But if I am delayed, this letter will not will let you know how we should conduct ourselves in God's household, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. No one can deny how great is the secret of our religion. He appeared in human form, was shown to be right by the Spirit, and was seen by angels. He was preached among the nations, was believed in throughout the world, I must take him up to heaven. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Katie. Katie. So, we've, so just we've just heard, heard what it looks, looks like to be a good, good servant, servant leader. leader. So, we're, so now we're now going, going to, to sing, sing about our serving king, king, Jesus. Jesus.
Let, Let us, us pray. pray. Loving God, God, we come we now to focus on your word, ready, ready to be challenged in order to grow and mature into your likeness. Spirit, Spirit convict, convict us when we need to be challenged and lead us to the truth you are revealing in your word. Amen. Well, if you're in any doubt that God speaks to us today, then listen to this story. So last week I planned to visit all the elders in the church. They are 28 active elders. And after I visited them, I planned to visit all the leaders and all the helpers that help with the ministry and mission here in Dundonald. So the goal of my visits is firstly to provide pastoral and spiritual care to the people that are supporting others. But secondly, to hopefully affirm each elder and helper in their role to hear their their stories and and to make make sure that these special people continue to serve from their gifting and to grow and and mature in their faith. Well, after after visiting visiting two elders elders one day, and what a blessed blessed time that was was for me, I came came home to have a look to see what the scripture was going to be for Sunday the 22nd of August. And we got what we got today, entitled Leaders and Helpers in the Church. A coincidence? Oh, is your minister minister cherry-picking scriptures scriptures to challenge you? Well, no. I I believe that God God speaks today, and I think God has a message for us as a church today. So I want to put this passage passage into context. context. Timothy's task was to identify and appoint leaders among the believers in Ephesus. But at the time, there was false teachers about, and they were really causing problems and leading people astray. So So Paul was writing writing to provide some some guidelines. guidelines. And these these guidelines guidelines for elders and helpers and leaders leaders in the church have stood the test test of time. time. So So let's let's look now at some of the qualifications qualifications that Paul outlines in this passage for church church leaders, leaders, helpers helpers and elders. And And I'm I'm going to read read now from the message translation. The message translation is a Bible translation which is put into more contemporary language. So this is what it says. If anyone anyone wants wants to provide leadership leadership in the church, church, good, but but they they are preconditions. A leader leader must be well thought of, of, committed to his wife, cool and collected, collected, accessible and hospitable. hospitable. He He must must know know what he's he's talking about, about, not not be over fond of wine, wine, not not pushy, pushy, but gentle, gentle, not not thin-skinned, not money-hungry. He must must handle handle his own affairs well, attentive to his own children and having their respect. For if if someone someone is unable unable to handle handle his own affairs, affairs, how can can he take take care of God's church? He must must not be a new believer, believer, lest the position go to his head and the devil devil trip him up. Outsiders Outsiders must must think well of him, or or else the devil devil will figure out a way to lure him into his trap. trap. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Well, there's quite a heavy responsibility for anyone that's a church leader or elder. High standards indeed. But this this guidance guidance is needed needed because because as Christians, Christians, we we represent the church which which belongs to the living God. God. If If we we upset, offend, hurt, hurt, and insult insult others, others, we damage damage the living God. God. We damage damage other people's people's opinion of God and God's God's people. people. And we don't don't have to look look very far to find people that have been damaged by the words and actions of others within the wider church. I'm sure sure we all all know of people people that will not entertain entertain our Christian Christian thoughts or listen to the gospel message or welcome an invitation to church because in the the past, someone someone that called themselves a Christian Christian has been unkind or unjust unjust to them. them. But But on on the flip flip side, side, others others have been led to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ by the wholesome witness of other believers. And I am one of these people. I became a Christian because when I looked at my friend Jude's life, I saw saw a life life that was rich rich in wonderful wonderful things. things. It was was attractive attractive because it was was rich in God's goodness and God's God's love. So it's it's good and so life-giving to be a spiritual spiritual leader leader to others, others, but the the standards standards are high. And the the list list of qualifications that Paul gives shows that living a blameless and pure life requires effort and self-discipline. Christian leadership is not about power 
and status, self-promotion and an opportunity for advancement. It's not the same as leadership in the corporate world. Christian leadership is about servanthood, humility, gentleness, care, respect, hospitality and putting others above ourselves. Well, you, well, might, you be might be sitting, sitting here today thinking, well, these high standards aren't, aren't expected of me because I'm not a leader, I'm not, I'm not an elder, and I'm not yet a helper in the church. church. But these standards are for everyone, everyone that calls themselves a follower of Jesus. But before you get up and walk out, because I've made you feel thoroughly inadequate, <laughs> it is a high bar. Remember, Remember the strength to live according, according to God's will. will comes from, from Christ. Christ. The, strength the strength to live according, according to God's will comes from Christ. Christ. When, when Jesus, Jesus emptied himself on the cross for us, he did, did so, so to give us the opportunity to reach our God-given God potential, to help, to help us become, become free from, from sin, and, and to equip us to serve as kingdom, kingdom people for God's, God's glory. glory. The, strength the strength to live according to God's, God's will comes from Jesus. So, so contrary to every society and religion in existence, existence the, the kingdom, kingdom of heaven is based on the power of, of service to others, not, not the power of making other people serve. And, and Jesus, as we have sung, is the ultimate servant king who died in service to mankind. He was, he was crucified in our place and took all our sins on himself so we can be free. We should, we should not, not be looking, looking for ways, ways to gain glory for ourselves, but for ways, ways to serve others, our God and King. And, and if you, you think, think this sounds, sounds like too much, much of a challenge, challenge too, too much, much effort, effort, effort and not something, something I can do, then think, think again. God, God will, will equip and, and empower all, all people, no matter what their age and no matter what their stage. His, His love and power knows no boundaries, and he, and he can, can use you no matter what your situation, age, or position. Now, a challenging verse in this letter is this one. It was challenging for me, and I wonder if it's challenging for you as well. For if a man cannot manage his own household, how can he take care of God's church? I know, I know I've been, been called, called to Christian ministry and to serve faithfully, faithfully the parish here in Dundonald as best as I possibly can. can. However, However, this, this does, does not happen at the expense of my family. My family. God has, has called, called me first to be a loving wife and a present mother. mother. Sadly, Sadly, I know I many real, real stories, stories of Christian workers, missionaries, leaders and volunteers that have made the mistake of their work being so important that they are justified in ignoring their families. But spiritual, but spiritual leadership, leadership begins, begins in our, our own household. Paul says if a man is not willing to care for, discipline and teach his children, he is not qualified to lead the church. And we, and we should, should never allow our volunteer activities to detract from our family responsibilities because we witness to God's goodness and grace behind God, uh, closed doors as well. So, so as, as a church, church we should have high expectations and standards for our leaders, leaders. Not, because not because we want to rule over other people, but because we want other people to know Jesus. We want our leaders and volunteers to reflect God's goodness and grace in the lives, both their public lives and their private lives. We want to be Christians that draw other people to Christ. Now, now contagious, contagious Christians, Christians are people that are authentically living their lives in a transparent and pure way. Contagious Christians don't have a Sunday best. They are what you see no matter where they are and no matter what they are doing. Contagious Christians draw their strength from Jesus. Now, here is a quote from a book that I love, and I realise the book is actually open for you to, to read. It's in our library across the road in the church hall. So when the church hall is open and you're having tea and coffee, go and have a look at the library because there's some good books in it. But this book is called How to Become a Contagious Christian. And here's a wee quote. 
God wants us to become contagious Christians, his agents, who will first catch his love and then urgently and infectiously offer it to all who are willing to consider it. So when, so when I was, I was a non-Christian, my friend modelled a different kind of lifestyle from what I was seeing in the world around about me, and it was really, really attractive. And this is the only reason that I trusted her when she suggested that I should go to church and enrol on an Alpha course. And many non-Christians will recognise when someone is living with the integrity proper to a faith in a living God and will respect them for it. And of course it goes the other way. If I'm standing up here on a Sunday preaching to you the gospel, and you know there's a blatant sin in my life, and you can see that I'm doing things that are not God-honoring, why will you listen to me? And just watch how the newspaper sneer at anyone in a position of public trust who fails to live up to that trust in their personal life. They are high standards placed on us as believers in Jesus, and especially for those that are leaders and elders, because we are to be role models. We are to be salt and light leading other people to Jesus. Now, I wonder how many of you have noticed that Paul is only talking about men in this letter. Did you notice that? <laughs> so does this mean that only men can be leaders, elders, and ministers in the church? Well, obviously, well, obviously I, don't I don't think so, because, because in case you, case you haven't, haven't noticed, noticed, I am a woman. <laughs> but, my but my reading of the rest of the New Testament inclines me to think that only the male pronoun is used here because that is how Greek grammar normally refers to both genders together. And because in the very early days of the church, the leaders of most communities were probably men. But I don't see this scripture to be debarring of women from positions of leadership in the church. And, and here, here, right here, here in Dundonald, we, we actively, actively encourage and nurture both men and women to serve in this church and to become, become elders. So God, God wants all his children to embody the life of the new creation, which has been begun in Jesus and is available to all of us by the power of the Spirit. We are Jesus' people. Our lives should be different. So here, so here are some, are some tough, tough questions, questions for you. you. What, what are, are we known? What are we known, what are we known for to those on the outside? What are we known for to those on the outside? Are we known for our tendency to gossip and to moan? Or for our willingness to listen and help others without judgment? Are we known for letting grudges fester or by witnessing forgiveness in the way that we relate to other people? Are we, are we known, known for, for our caring, caring kindness, kindness when, when people, people are going, going through, through hard times? times? Or do or they, they give, give us a wide birth? birth? Now I'm aware, aware that these passages, passages from Timothy are challenging, challenging. And, please and please don't, don't think, think that God, God isn't is challenging me as well as I prepare for these sermons. sermons. In, In fact, fact, I expect God, God to challenge me every week about my own personal conduct and spiritual health. If he doesn't, then I'm not fit to be your minister here. But what, what I've, I've learned, learned in the last 14, 14 years of being a Christian is that, is that people, people are more likely to listen to what I say if they like what they see of who I am. People are more likely to listen to you if they like what they see of who you are. So how do we recognize new leaders in the church? Right now we are in need of some new leaders in our church. Our, our faithful, faithful elders, elders are getting, getting older. older. And just, and just as, as, as we are able, able to retire from our posts, posts our jobs, there should, there should be an opportunity for our faithful elders to retire from their duties too. So, so in the, in the next, next couple of years, we will be in a, 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 a difficulty in our church if we cannot get new leaders, leaders coming up through the church. So I want you to try answering these questions. Who do, Who do I respect, I respect enough, enough to follow and obey? For whom have I learned the word of God? Who has taught me scripture and helped me to put it into practice? To whom would I go if I needed counselling in my spiritual life? 
who has has ministered to me me in a pastoral pastoral way? way? And could could I ask ask if names names are coming coming to your your mind today, and and they are names names of people people that are not yet elders, elders, that you let me know who they are? And if names are coming to your mind who are elders and leaders in this church, why not pick up the phone and encourage them? Send them an email, send them a letter, send them a card. As I said said at the the beginning of the service, service, when when I receive receive messages messages of encouragement, encouragement, they they just just fuel you for the rest of the day. day. So So these these elders elders are faithfully serving. serving. Please Please acknowledge them and give them your support. But we are all called to be servants of God because we believe in Jesus, our ultimate servant king. We are called to reflect his goodness, his kindness in care and service to others. We are are called called to live lives that stand stand out as being different from God's glory. We are Jesus' people. Let's show people what we believe and how we live our lives. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son to show us what it means to be a servant. Make us more like Jesus. Keep us from vying for positions and power. Help us to grow in holiness and humility. And above all else, keep our eyes focused on you. Amen. I'm going to invite Maria and Stephen to come out to the front. We're going to be singing a worship song now called Lord Reign in Me. We've We've sung sung it a couple couple of times. times. The last last time we sung it in the church, church, Gordon was playing playing on the the guitar guitar and young young Callum Penman led us in uh, the the song. song. But But today today we've got Maria on the piano and Stephen singing. If you don't know it, stand up and let the lyrics wash over you. It's a really easy, catchy worship song, so hopefully you can all sing it together. Corinthians chapter 9, God God loves a cheerful cheerful giver. giver. And And Eugene Eugene Peterson in in his translation of the Bible says, God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. giving. So let us pray together. together. God of grace, it is our delight and our devotion to give you these gifts. All we are and all we have are yours alone. Accept this joyful offering as a token of our abiding love. Use it it to bring bring peace, peace, justice, justice, and and comfort comfort to all in your your world. world. Amen. 
We're now, We're now going, going to, to hear, hear the, the prayers, prayers of Stephen, Stephen interceding, interceding for us, for our, our world and other, other people. people. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we give you thanks, thanks for the guidance, guidance you have given our church, our church leaders through the writing of Paul. Help, Help them, them to remember the ideals, ideals that you have set to them, them and, give and give them the strength to live up to them. them. We pray especially for our church leaders here in Dundonald, for Lindsay, our minister, for elders and board members, and for volunteers in the many different ministries. We pray this week for the people of Afghanistan in the light of the seizure of power by the Taliban. We remember particularly those who may be targeted for assisting the previous government or the US and their allies, women who face greater restrictions on their way of life, and Shia Muslims, Muslims and Christians who face persecution because of their faith. Help, Help those who are involved in providing safe passage out of the country for those who fear for their lives. We pray also for the people of Haiti following the earthquake last weekend, for those who have lost their homes and for the families of those who have died. We pray that humanitarian relief can be transported safely into the country and freely distributed to those who need it. We look around at the planet you have entrusted to us as guardians and we confess that we have let you down. The devastating effects of climate change have been seen this summer in the floods across Europe and in the wildfires in California and in Greece. We pray for the upcoming COP26 conference in Glasgow that decisions made there can have a positive effect in stopping and even reversing climate change. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Just before, Just before we, we sing, sing our, our final, final hymn together, together this morning, morning just, just a reminder that you can leave by either door today. Uh, just, just try and maintain, and maintain a, a good, good social, social distance, distance between people leaving and you and can you sanitize, sanitize your hands, hands on the way out. But it's, it's been wonderful, wonderful having you with us today and, and please spread the word that church, church is a safe space. So come, come back, back in, in person. person. We, want we want to see you. you. We're going to sing a, a wonderful, wonderful hymn, hymn that will pair you up for the whole week. week. <laughs> We're talking, We're talking about, about you, know, you know, it's very, very hard, hard to do things, things on our own strength, strength but we don't, we don't have, have to do things, things on our own strength because we believe in Jesus and his spirit lives in us. So we're so going to sing, I'll go in the strength of the Lord. Of the Lord. And I want to really, really hear this lift the roof. The roof. Let's, Let's sing, sing together. together.
I'm, I'm glad, glad Heather was singing, singing that, that one, not me. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and forevermore. Amen.